Today we're building in the SUPO one from Lee and Lee. This is a very interesting case and I'm excited for you to tag along. Cue the interstellar music, let's go. We'll start by taking off the panels. No thumb screws here, they just pop off. The panels are all quite sturdy, typical Lee and Lee quality. The right panel is all vented as it's a side that'll have six fans spinning. Three of those fans will be exhaust fans and three of those fans will be part of the all-in-one cooler that I'll be putting in here. The top and front panels have magnetic dust filters that are easily removed for cleaning. Here's a better look at the dust filter on one of the panels. They're both the same on each top and front panels. The power supply compartment of the case is able to house a couple of three and a half inch hard drives. The hard drive caddy is of exceptional quality. I'll be removing this hard drive cage as it's just in the way for me in this build. To remove it, we just have to take a couple of screws out and it just pops out. Look at that, that gives us a bunch of extra room for cables down there. And you can even see all the front panel wiring in there. The main compartment area is loaded with holes to route cables. They're everywhere. Just a note, this case does support back connect motherboards. Here's a look from the front. You can see the three included 120 millimeter fans that will be exhausting hot air out the side of the case. Let's get the PSU installed. First, we have to remove the PSU bracket. Couple of thumb screws hold it into place. We can then fasten this 850 watt Seasonic unit to the bracket, and then we'll slide the whole unit in. Cables first, of course. I recommend always plugging in your power supply cables to your power supply before installing it into the case. And there is a bottom dust filter included in this case for your power supply intake fan. Here's a better look at the fan bracket and radiator bracket. We're going to be loading up a 360 millimeter all-in-one in here. The top has this panel that needs to be removed. It's got a few screws in it. Just unscrew it and remove it. This panel helps with cable management and keeping airflow flowing the way it's meant to. Now, let's remove the radiator and fan brackets while we're here. A screw anchors each of the brackets to the chassis. The bracket just pops up and out once the screw's removed. Now, there's a bunch of little screws here that can easily go missing, but because Lee and Lee is the goat when it comes to cases and customer service, they give you this little fish tank tackle container to help you keep organized. I know other cases do this too now, but Lee and Lee did it first from my understanding. And no, this video is not sponsored. Here's a look at the back where all of our cables are gonna be running. There's so many holes and so much accessibility. We need to get this PCI Express riser out of the way. I'm going to cut the zip ties holding it down from the back because if I cut it from the front, knowing me, I'll miss and cut the riser. The riser has RGB lighting right where my hand is there. And the RGB wire runs out the back of the case and back inside. So for now, we'll just have to unplug it. Alright, let's tip this sucker on its side and get the motherboard in place. I'm not going to show you the CPU RAM SSD install in this video as I'm just reusing all these components in this build from a previous video. So if you want to watch that install, you can check out my other videos or the hundreds of other videos on YouTube. But once it's lined up in place, let's screw the motherboard down. Because this case is so open, we aren't going to have any problem reaching any of the screws. 
we can get at every screw from multiple angles. Oh, I love black on black. I should probably try getting into some white builds one day. All the front panel cables and stuff is nicely organized. Let's untie it all and make a mess of it. Might as well just tuck this riser away for a bit while we run cables. All right, now that that's out of the way, let's run some cables and plug some things in. Let's start with the dreaded front panel connectors. Starting with the power reset button connector. I appreciate that these two power and reset buttons are just on one header instead of multiple individual plugs that have to go into your motherboard. It takes all the guessing out if you're doing it right or wrong when you're plugging them in. Now, let's hammer out the USBs. Let's jam both of these cables through for now. Then first, we'll plug in the front panel USB-A connection. And right after that, we can't forget our handy dandy USB-C connection. This one I'm pushing through is the front panel audio, which will allow me to plug my headphones in at the front of the case. Beautiful. All the front panel stuff is out of the way. Now we can move on to more cable management. Yay. You know what? Scratch that. Let's install the GPU. We're putting a Radeon 7900 XTX from XFX in this thing. This doohickey here helps support the GPU. The GPU gets mounted at the bottom to this PCIe-esque like bracket. So we have to remove the screw that holds the bracket in place so we can pull it out. And just so you know, you can adjust the position of the bracket depending on the length and width of your video card so that it's centered. The GPU just gets connected to the bracket, just like how a GPU would get normally connected to the PCI slots on your computer case. And just so you know, all the screws I've been using to screw and unscrew components with, motherboard, power supply, GPU, they all come included with this case. All right, time to put this behemoth in. Because this is a very long card, I kinda had to maneuver it a little bit to get it in. Kinda play around with the fitment and I'm happy with that, so let's screw this down. It's a bit wobbly, of course, kind of like me after a big old cup of bourbon. That's why this top doohickey thing exists. This thing is extremely adjustable. It has soft pads on it, a very functional lip that kind of enthralls the GPU into place. Enthralls probably isn't the right word, whatever, you know what I mean. 
This XFX card body is slanted and this doohickey is meant for straight body GPUs, but it still works. I know it's not actually called a doohickey. I'm just a hick. Anyways, nice and secure. Oh yeah, that ain't shaking now. You can see the whole case shaking when I shake the GPU. The case and the GPU are one. All right, fun time is over. Time to get back to the cable management. Let's run the two eight pin CPU power cables. Once again, the cable management features of this case are some of the best I've experienced in building PCs. Straps and holes galore. Having uninterrupted access from the top of the case is an underestimated feature in cases. It makes plugging stuff into the top of the case seem unfair when comparing it to other cases. That crossbar right there you see can be removed too, but I didn't need to. Alright, time is a ticking and we still have quite a bit to go over. So the case comes with a built-in RGB controller, so that means it needs a SATA power connection to it. I already plugged one string of SATA power cables into my PSU, so we're covered. Let's plug that in. And for your information, if you don't want to use the built-in RGB case controller, you can plug the RGB stuff into your motherboard or into the other RGB stuff that you already have using this universal RGB connector. Let's get our GPU connected to our motherboard via the riser cable. Fish it through. First, we'll plug the male end into the motherboard just like a video card would normally go in. Then we'll plug the RGB wire back in, into our riser. Then don't forget to secure the riser into the PCI bracket built into the case. Let's take a quick look at this mirror thing. It can be removed if you don't like it. SSDs can be installed in its place, but I'm gonna leave it in. I don't really care for it. I'm just, what else am I gonna do with it? We'll just leave it. All right, back to business. I guess it makes sense to get the 24 pin motherboard power connected before we plug in the GPU to the riser. And also let's run the three eight pin GPU power cables and then we'll get all that plugged in. I'm not too big on custom cables because I don't really care. But man, does that look stupid with those ends sticking out. I guess I'll just have to deal with it. Nope, I can't handle it. There's gotta be something else I can do. Still looks completely effing stupid, but I can live with it. All right, finally, let's get this riser and GPU married to one another. Just lift the little hatch on the riser and conjoin them.
All right, we should do our best to do proper cable management in the back here because we're gonna want as much clearance as possible between the back of the motherboard tray and the intake of our fans because they're gonna be installed right here. Speaking of fans, let's tackle this RAS nets of an all-in-one cooler. First, let's get the radiator installed to the bracket so we can line it all up and get the cold plate installed to the CPU. The mounting hardware for this is already put on the motherboard, so we're good to go there. So I just ran the cold plate and tubes through the top and I'm going to lay it all down because it's easier to give the CPU the old hock tua in the horizontal position. That's like the perfect amount of greasy hock tua. But yeah, let's get this bad boy on. If you're wondering, this all-in-one is the EVGA CLCX 360mm cooler. I really like it, but I'm starting to get sick of RGB on my all-in-ones. Because of all this RGB wiring and whatnot, it just clutters everything up. I think for my next build, I'm gonna go with something that has no RGB. I don't mind the RGB on the front part, like on the little LCD screen of the cooler, little indicator or whatever on the cold plate. Nice subtle RGB, but RGB fans are just too much for me nowadays. Just so you know, I have the fan orientation on the radiator set to exhaust. It's probably supposed to be intake, but I didn't want to switch the fans around. And it will still work great as exhaust. I'll show you the airflow path for it in just a bit. First, let's get all this all-in-one connections connected. I call the fans exhaust because it's exhausting out the case. I guess I could call it a push orientation as it's pushing air through the radiator. All right, that's the SATA power for the all-in-one cooler. So let's get that plugged in. This one's the fan connections to the all-in-one. The, the three fan connections going to the all-in-one. And of course, this one goes from the all-in-one to the motherboard. So let's get that through and plug it into the motherboard, into a fan header. And this one is the all-in-one USB connection so that the all-in-one can communicate with the machine. Plug that into a USB header. They're usually found on the bottom of your motherboards. I decided I'm not gonna use the fans RGB so I'm just gonna tuck all that away. So there is a good amount of space between the back of the motherboard and the fans. Air is gonna get sucked in through the back of the case and out through the radiator. Since my cables are pretty cleaned up in there, airflow isn't going to be a problem. I mean, look at that. Who wouldn't be happy with that clearance? All right, moving on. Let's get the three exhaust fans in. Let's fish that cable through. And I must have accidentally deleted the footage, but I did end up plugging that PWM cable into the motherboard which controls and gives power to the three exhaust fans that I'm screwing in right here. Here's just another look at the clearances and cable management. A lot of the cables can be hid pretty well up top here. And then this cover goes on and it's like the cables aren't even there. Here's another look at the cable management. I think I'm pretty much done cable management at this point. There might be a few little things to clean up. It's just so easy in this case. Hey, look at this. I scuffed my screen on my all-in-one cooler pretty good. It looks way worse in real life.
Oh, this wouldn't be a supple one video if I didn't talk about this bracket. You can add a 120 millimeter fan to either intake or exhaust. Lee and Lee recommends you use it to intake air. I should have installed the fan earlier at this point. I just wanted to get this built finished up. So I said, screw it. It just gets screwed down there and there's holes for your fan cable to go through. And very important, we need to run a display port cable or if you're using HDMI and HDMI cable from the GPU at the back. It's very easy and there's these awesome little clips to keep it tight. All right, let's just get that through and then we can start buttoning this thing back up. Normally I always peel my side panels off before I install them, because if you don't, well, I'll show you, the case can become very electrically charged. Overall, this case was very fun to build in. I love Lee and Lee as a manufacturer, a designer, a brand, and I appreciate how they're always innovating and pushing the boundaries of case design. This case is high quality. The cable management is superb, airflow is plentiful. Building in it was a blast. Now, I hope you liked this journey that you didn't even know you were gonna be a part of. Please join me in my next journey as I build in my first small form factor case.